Hello and welcome to the Play It Forward podcast presented by Peace Players, the podcast where we lift up the voices and stories of people working in their communities and networks to promote peace and equity. My name is Chinny Nwagbo and I am your host and I'm so delighted to be here because I know that I'm going to walk away from the show with some major gems. Mm. And so I hope all of you that are listening acquire and get, let's say, the same things. And that being said, on today's episode, we have an incredibly special guest joining us who will share with us the inner workings of sports philanthropy and how we can build stronger and more inclusive communities around the world. Uh, but before I do that uh, and even get there, I've got to wheel them on in the best ever to do it. My co-host, Emmett Shepard. Oh, the applause. They're so loud. Sorry. Oh Hold God, on. I have to wait for the applause to end. No, <laughs> thank you so much. Hello, my good listeners. My name is Emmett Shepard. I am the co-host of the beautiful Janine Wagbo, oh, aka you. also the podcast coordinator, aka the king of the iceberg, <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Um, Chinny, I'm very excited about Me our too. guest today, Me and uh, I think we should give the listeners what they want, and you know the drill. Who are we talking to? You know today? the drill. Um, and so I am going to read from my paper because there's nothing that uh, this wonderful human hasn't done yet. So it, it's going to go something like this. Uh, she is an internationally recognized expert on sports philanthropy who has spent 19 years advising and sharing her experience with organizations such as Major League Baseball, Nike Global Community Impact, the National Basketball Association, the U.S. Soccer Foundation, and the Women's Sports Foundation. She's been featured in global media outlets such as the New York Times, Sports Business Journal, and Calls Talk Radio and ESPN as well. Uh, Alicia currently serves as the director of the prestigious Robert Woods Johnson Foundation Sports Award, the nation's largest philanthropy dedicated solely to health. She is co-founder and co-director of Sports and Entertainment Impact Certificate and it, the SEIC, I'll call it, and then you can correct me on how we say that, is an accredited academic certificate program which offers the gold standard in trusted professional development for leaders across sport, entertainment, and philanthropy industries. Please put your hands together and make some noise for our amazing and phenomenal, strong guest, Alicia Greenberg. Alicia, thank you and welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Do not be shy here. We're gonna pull all that goodness out of you today. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're happy and excited. I didn't want to mention the fact that um, your son has a podcast. Your sons have podcasts too, but I'm sure you'll have some space to get to that as well. She's a proud, proud mom of two sons who are oh babies. One, what? one. One son. It's, sorry, with so one son. it's with his cousin. Oh, with his cousin. I'm sorry. With his cousin who <laughs> is also a podcast, podcast host. And you'll be surprised at how old he is. How old is he? He's 10. He's 10 years old. What? He's very, very excited. Mom is on a podcast. Today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. So when I was I 10, just... I was definitely not uh, partaking in podcast <laughs> I know, I told festivities. You that. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm impressed you beyond belief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you got to listen to it. It's so cute. Um, and I don't want to take away from this moment that's about to just unravel itself in a great way, but I'm going to send it over to the AKA, you know, icebreaker king himself. I'm like dusting off his throne for him to, to bring us on in. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, uh, Alicia, what we like to do in each episode uh, before we start to dive into a really healthy and amazing conversation is... Um, what we call an icebreaker. And so I uh, have just one, we're gonna just ask you an icebreaker question and uh, then that will get the ball rolling. So yeah. yeah, today's icebreaker question is, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And I think this is an amazing question every single time we ask it. So I'm excited to hear what That's you say. That's a good question. I don't think we think about these things, right? Mm -hmm. We just go through our mm -hmm. daily motions. Oh gosh. Um, well, this is the first thing that comes to mind. I live in DC and the Olympic rings came through our city uh, not that long ago. Ooh. And I had some mixed emotions and feelings about the Olympics even happening during a pandemic, <laughs> but 
Mm -hmm. was so excited to be able to go and um so I went with my son now my my 10 year old you now know (laughs) Um, (laughs) I we both went down there and got to sit on the rings and I'd never done that before very cool very cool I know right as well yeah yeah that's a a good memory for any kid Uh, do we know which do we know which color you sat on which ring color did you sit on that's important this came up because (laughs) (laughs) of course if you go with a 10 year old you're going to talk about which ring you're going to sit on Mm -hmm. so as far as I remember I sat on green and he sat on gold Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. yeah those are two good ones. Those are solid. Yeah. Those are solid. Well, I'm Greenberg, so he's like, "Mom, you gotta go with green because it's your oh name." And the whole thing. Yeah. So. So there's layers to it. See, people oh, don't think about this kind of stuff, Jane. No. This is the, the important I question. Know. Uh, and and so thank you so much for sharing that. And I and I I mean that's it's very special. And so, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, as we have just so much to unpack here, but I, I want to start with uh, just how you got started with sports philanthropy. Uh, your journey seems so, so very unique and rewarding, especially your love for connecting and sharing knowledge, right? So can you share first, first of all, I think people need to know what sports philanthropy is and then how you arrived at this pretty, uh, really amazing field uh, in the first place. And I think most importantly, how does the work you do in sports philanthropy um, really impact impact the world I I would say yeah um so I started 19 20 years ago now almost Mm -hmm. um I I had to spell philanthropy for people (laughs) um so it's it's always amazing now that that people even know what it is so it's it's come so far and we there's still so many terms out there there's you know, sports impact, sport for good, and sport for social development. There's so many terms. At the end of the the day, I I think we all, we all can speak sport. We can all understand sport. I mean, the Olympics, as we just talked, Olympics are the perfect example. Like, you don't need to speak the same language. You don't need to look the same. Whatever it is, sports is the unifier. Um, Right, right. So, but it's using that and that connection for good and for having an impact on a community or you on just a basic level helping people through sport and there's there's so many different avenues and different things people do to get to that end result but it's it's a I mean it's definitely grown a lot as a field but and and it really is different like you mentioned internationally it's very different um the certificate program that that I run we've had students internationally and their approach to philanthropy in different countries is very very different than ours in the United States so there is also that understanding of sport philanthropy here in the U.S. is not the same as it is elsewhere right right Um, I think uh, it's important to just understand philanthropy. Sometimes when we hear philanthropy, we're thinking about how we can make this huge and dynamic yeah. impact when essentially on the most individual skill is is what you're doing today to help someone else. Uh, and that's what philanthropy truly is. And I, I kind of want to take a moment to you kind of touch space on it uh, to talk a bit about the part where you're telling us about what sports philanthropy does, your work and how it Im- impacts others and open this space for you to speak to us a bit about the sports and entertainment impact certificate uh, that you've created and co-founded. Yeah, sure. So really at the end of the, the day, the, the certificate is a, a place for people to convene and come together and network with each other. It's, it's an executive certificate program for leaders in sports and entertainment impact. So these are folks running large corporations, you know, community impact departments like, um, you know, a Nike or a Gatorade, but then you also have professional teams, uh, leadership, community relations development folks, um, league level folks like from Major League Baseball, but then you have the grassroots and you have these community soccer programs or lacrosse programs or whatever, you know, fill in the blank sport. Um, They're using that sport to make an impact and you know, they have the passion and the drive, but never actually had the necessarily the, the curriculum behind it and, right. and the training. So it's a training program, it's a coaching program for 
these leaders to come back and you know we all need to learn at all levels and so it's it gives people that opportunity to do it um it's a virtual program and we've had we've seen so many amazing stories from it that it, it's it's pretty neat when we can all just learn from each other no matter who we are and where we are i'm thinking because i want to I, I have a million questions regarding the hold on let me pronounce it correctly the uh SCIC right correct correct yes um but I actually am still fascinated uh Alicia with sort of how those uh initial years in that 19 to 20 year career you've had in sports philanthropy were kind of and so more specifically I think um you know you you're considered to be a trailblazer in the industry and so you know uh being a trailblazer on its own is no walk in the park. Absolutely. Um, but then, like we said, because there's no standard in place for you as a trailblazer, if that makes sense. And you have to set the bar individually for the people to come. And so like, my question is sort of, <clears throat> excuse me, my question is, what is that experience like for you uh, on top of being also in an industry that is pretty male dominated to begin with? Yeah. Um, it's interesting on the philanthropy side, to, right. to be honest, I, I think sports is always considered male dominated, um, uh, yeah. and <laughs> a culture, 100%, yeah. um, very different culture than, than other, you know, industries. Um, I think I've always been fortunate. I, I've worked with really strong, um, women leaders around yeah. me, um, even from day one. And, I think that's probably made a huge difference. Um, And on the philanthropy side, there's, to me, the people I look up to who, to me, are my trailblazers, um, that a lot of them are women. And I, you know, they're on, I I get to work with them. So many of them are (laughs) my faculty members of my certificate program, and they're amazing mentors to me. And I I find the philanthropy side really different than a lot of it's almost its own bubble (laughs) because there are there's there's a lot of amazing women leading that space do you feel I want to push you a little bit more do you feel as though as a woman you have sort of a responsibility to continue to voice uh representation of women within the philanthropy world or do you feel like the philanthropy bubble is more so set it's more right. so the larger bubble of sports in general. That means to incorporate what, women, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean right. that's a good question. Good question. That's a really good question. Um, I'm really big on mentorship in general, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely, I am proud to be a woman in philanthropy. Um, my co-director for the certificate we are a women-led certificate program. oh nice like, we we own that like we are like right. we're proud of that um because it, it isn't always easy so mm-hmm. yeah I I definitely lift up other women and you know who are interested in the field or um just looking for opportunities I I mean it it, it definitely plays a part I would say hmm I think that's that's awesome. You know, you never want to you you always if you're in these trailblazing positions, you never want to feel like it's a burden. Um, mm-hmm. And what it sounds like uh, the energy that you're sharing with us is it's something that you look forward to and something that you are happy about doing. And I'm and I'm and I'm, I'm almost proud to be on this side of the call. Like yes, <laughs> yeah. empowerment. Yeah. Yes, bring us yeah. along. And so that's that's very um, my favorite word. Very awesome and amazing. So mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. The bomb.com, you could say. I, I would always no. say the bomb.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, that being said, I think <clears throat> it's time for us to get into something very special that we like to play, Alicia. And that is called our, Emmett, what's it called? Lightning round. <laughs> um, Alicia, so this is just a quick exhale before we dive right back into the conversation. Uh, it's called our lightning round. It's fun. It's rapid. It's get to know you sort of question based thing. But the only rule is uh, you have to answer in under three seconds. It's very quick. And don't worry, we'll judge you heavily on each one of your answers. <laughs> right, so right, it's okay. Right, right, right. No pressure at all. No, no pressure just kidding. at all. Yeah. Um, any questions on your end? No. no are you ready? Are we ready? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay, perfect. Jenny, you okay, got the clock great. ready? <laughs> yes, I got it. I got it ready. It's here. Let's go. Okay. 
Favorite time of the day? Mm. Evening. Evening. All right. Perfect. Okay. Favorite meal of the day? Dinner. <laughs> Sweet or salty food? Sweet. Ooh, that was that like the confidence behind that, that one. That was like, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Scuba diving or skydiving? Mm, neither. No. Yeah, that's, that's you know what? They about. try to get through this one with a neither, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> Got to pick one. Uh, I guess scuba. Mm, okay. Yeah. Favorite sport? Baseball. Oh, Ooh. okay. Favorite place okay. in the world to travel? Mm. Mm. I love the California coast but also upstate New York. Oh, okay. Two drastically different, but I respect <laughs> Very it. Very different. For different <laughs> reasons. Uh, for different yeah. reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. I agree, actually. Um, last thing you laughed at? Mm, my son. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, last book you read? <laughs> I don't get to read. I don't get to finish a lot of books. I've been trying Same. to finish the Barack Obama uh, Promised Land. I've been trying to get oh, yeah. that for mm -hmm. a month. So I'm I'd say I haven't finished it. <laughs> no, it is a, it is a big book though, isn't it? Like it's, yeah, six hundred pages it's or something long. like that. I, yeah. It's yeah. pretty short, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last movie you watched? The Jungle Cruise. Oh, oh, the oh that's not with my son. Oh, yeah. Emily oh, very nice. Yes, yes. The Rock. Yes. The Rock's in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, save it or spend it. Hmm. I'm sort of a both. I go both ways on that. Um, probably save. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Dine out or dine in? Dine in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Country or city life? City. Uh, what was the last thing that made you smile? Um, probably also my son. <laughs> we will accept There's that. There's a theme. <laughs> There's a right, theme. Right, right, right. Uh, name a person who inspires you. Oh, this, I love this one. Hmm. Um, Simone Biles recently. Oh, very yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, name one thing you want to leave the world with after you're gone. Hmm. Healing. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's my superpower. We always ask the kids, what, what will your superpower be? And I always say mine would be healing. Healing, oh. yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then final question, Alicia, one takeaway you want our listeners to remember from today. That we can all make a difference, no we matter sure who we are or what position we have. Mm. Yes. And mm. with that, Alicia, you have made it through the gauntlet <laughs> of the lightning round. Congratulations. Yes, and you've done a brilliant job. That was that wasn't so hard, was it? No, right. no. Awesome. Um, thank you, I mean, No, no, it was fine. <laughs> yeah, no, just per 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 yeah. Um, thank you so much. I mean, I, I, so I, I want to just pivot Alicia just a tad bit um, and explore your position as a leader um, who issues grants and rewards to nonprofits, um, financial awards really, that annually recognize professional sports teams, individual athletes and coaches and community organizations inspiring healthier communities through sport. And I think my first uh, true question here is I'm interested in dissecting how you define these health, what is a healthier community? Sure, so I have the privilege of working with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation on the sports award. And as you said, they, they're the largest foundation in the country devoted to health. So right. um, health is a huge passion of mine and I, I really, I'm just honored, honestly, to be able to get to work with them. Um, so health is really defined, especially within the foundation of that you, your health should not be defined by your zip code, that it should okay. not matter where you live um, and where you, your community is, that, that everyone should have an opportunity for health equity. Yeah. And so that's, that's sort of the standard definition, um, but really it's, you know, just, it shouldn't matter what you look like, you know, where you're from or any, anything that, that all of us should have that opportunity to right. be able to live and learn and play in, in a healthy community. In a healthier yeah. community, right? Uh, community yeah. is healthier than what we have present. Yeah. Um, and so uh, with, with that, um, 
with the definition of healthier communities. I, I, I wanna also like uh, talk about um, or even visit your relationship with your grantees. Um, yeah. This is a, this is a ch ch uh, excuse me, tricky, sticky, I would also say place to be in, right? Because in one regard, uh, you want to support financially. Like you said, you want to give everybody these uh, equal, um, equitable opportunities, um, but you don't want to like dictate and control. Um, but in another regard, essentially, sometimes that's what donors kind of do. Um, and it's not on purpose, but it's just what happens. And um, they s support financially, um, but sometimes they provide these guidelines and some, and in some cases, strict guidelines um, that may not always align with the true needs of the communities they intend to serve. Um, so tell me a bit about that balance of understanding um, your privilege from a funder's or donor's perspective without really uh, utilizing it in a way that puts these people uh, of color in these communities at, at a disadvantage that you're trying to serve. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think our award in particular is unrestricted, so they are able to use funds however they wish and however yeah, they yeah. need. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but there's definitely restricted funding. And, and I think there is a big push right now for more equitable grant making in general. Right. I, I think it's, it's a huge topic at the moment. And, um, but I, I think there's some key things, you know, you can put things in place to, and we do have them, even though our funds are unrestricted. We, our review committee, for example, is a very diverse co committee where it's, you have community members who come from communities in which we are granting uh, funds. We have past winners who are doing work in their own communities who also come from you know, these communities. Um, so there's, I think you have to have those voices in the conversation to be able to make sure you're, you're making a decision um, and the funds are going where they need to go. I also think that you know, we do reference calls, for example, where I get to speak to the community directly um, just to make sure you know, hey, we read this application, it's amazing, but is this really happening? Yeah. Are they doing what they say they're doing? Um, you know, just just kind of checking in with the community to make sure that, that, that it's all about the community. So it always is. Um, yeah, and it has to be. So they have to be involved in whether it's the grant review or, you know, checking on an applicant or whatever it is, like making sure they're involved. Yeah, um, Emin and I were uh, talking a bit about this um, and I'm gonna kind of go off the fly here. And it was about the, um, how you mentioned this, how to make sure that uh, uh, that internal message matches that external message. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember the conversation mm -hmm. we were having, mm -hmm. she kind of pinpointed it, right? Where she has to do the research to, to call to make sure that all this brilliant stuff that's on paper is really, um, happening and so my I, and I, I don't know if I, I don't want to take it away from you Emmett but if, if you're no, okay no. asking yeah, it, yeah, please please uh, what happens when you run into a situation where when you do make the call all this brilliant stuff that is supposed to be happening isn't happening how do you go from there um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, also how do you do it in a way where you're not making decisions uh, for people who have different or drastically lived life experiences, right? So it may not look <laughs> like it should on paper, but there might be a reason why. Um, mm -hmm. So so that's kind of my question. It's kind of like all over the place, but how, how do you ensure uh, that needs are met, even though sometimes maybe that internal message does not match that external message? Yeah, and I think... I think it's it's a really important thing to be mindful of and sensitive to, especially, you know, there's a huge push for, for measurable results, for example. Um, ha gotta have our data. We have to have our numbers and our back, you know, all this. And I say that as someone who is honestly right now doing a third party evaluation for the Tony Hawk Foundation or what is now the skate park project. I am literally an evaluator. Mm -hmm. And I love data and I love the numbers and you need it to understand that you're having an impact. But it, the data part is just one piece where it's that it, it's coming into play a lot with this equitable grant making conversations because what we think of is, well, why don't you have the data on a funder side is 
not the same to a community that does it just it it's not always there and that shouldn't count against them so um so there's a few you know i i try to be really thoughtful for example in the conversations with the community where i don't ask them i mean there's it's not cookie cutter it's not like i'm asking the same questions of everyone and mm -hmm. um so for some it's you know okay you know the, you might not have the data but i want to hear more about this or you're really strong on DEI and I really want to hear about that or inclusion or whatever it is. Um, I think it's just always weighing things like in a different way for everybody because um, I mean, that's really what equity is at the end of the day, right? right. That's the whole difference right. between equality and equity. You know, people have this conversation all the time, but things can be equal, but they're not, you know, there's the equity isn't there. So I think that that's, I mean, that's really at the end of the day, the most important thing to do is to not always look at it all as if it's the same um, and not not rating them the same way. Yeah. What is what is when you say when you say data or DEI, what does that exactly look like? Just because I'm not an expert in this field <laughs> and most of our listeners aren't either. So what is like DEI and data when you say that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, those are just two of our award criteria, I guess. Um, so DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion piece, um, you know, for us, it's, or for the award, I'll say it's a lot of different things, um, but primarily that, let's say that the leadership of an organization is reflective of the communities being served, um, that they have a focus towards um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that can be I mean, honestly, that could be a lot of different things, but um, based on the community being served. So, I mean, honestly, it's really for the organization to figure out like their own value system around that, but um, it's important to us that they are having those conversations. And the measurement and evaluation piece is such that they are at least understanding what impact they're having. So they're running let's say a sports program of some sort, what impact are they having on not just, oh, well, the kids ran or, you know, the kids were active, it was great. Mm -hmm. No, we, like, we need more data than that. Um, and we don't just wanna know how many kids were active. I mean, it used to be you could get away with saying outputs, which are like 500 kids did this. Um, and really it, a lot of the big push had, had gone to really understanding the outcomes, which is, Okay, 500 kids did that, but as a result, X, Y, and Z happened. Um, right. And now there's even other level of, yeah, that's all great, but where's the systems change and all of that? Because you're doing all this stuff, but if you're not really pushing the system to change, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. And you spoke, uh, and I want to go back to this um, before we like, uh, you know, continue on, because uh, you said that the uh, sports philanthropy world is like a bubble, right? Um, yeah. And there are some strong women in that bubble. And I'm wondering if there is a representation of, of women of, of color in that bubble. Because um, we often see with, with funders, there's, there's a lack of representation with people of color. Um, and so in the sports uh, philanthropy space, is there a representation, uh, representation? I know that you said that there are strong women there, but uh, are, is there enough uh, a women of color there? And, and, and if not, what do you think uh, some things uh, that our society can do to ensure that uh, we are di more diverse? And that does continue to expand and, and, and include everyone. Yeah, I, I would say I have seen, I mean, I wouldn't even call it probably a good representation, no. Um, I would say com comparatively, I would say that there's a significant number of, of leaders within philanthropy that, um, that, I, that I, I mean, that I've worked with, that I've seen. I've seen it pushed. Um, I think people are pushing through a little more on that. Um, I had a colleague, you know, who ended up a pretty senior position, for example, at Major League Baseball. Um, I mean, things you wouldn't probably have seen um, yeah, years ago. Years ago. Um, a lot of the team level staff, you know, things like, like, I mean, you can definitely see the change. Um, 
is it enough? I mean, no, it's, it's absolutely not right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, what can be done? I think, I, I think the mentorship piece is huge. Yeah. I think that, you know, that pushing through, I mean, kind of like, you know, I, I think Emma, you said, you know, do I, you know, try to, to really help out, you know, any, any woman that wants to get in the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but it really, it's, it's all of it, you know, recognizing all of that. Like we need right. more of everyone. And so let's find a way to, to get, to make that happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's having the discussions connect, yeah. you know, having that mindset of, okay, we're all committed to, to this and, you know, we want this to change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and not just having women incorporated, but also making sure that they are successful in these leadership roles. Uh, and so I want to pivot a bit to um, the, the, the Robert Woods Johnson Foundation. Um, and as as a leader uh, of the sports award. I know that they, they do a lot, a lot of amazing work and they provide grants for a range of health issues, uh, including access to, to, to care and childhood. And they, you guys focus on childhood obesity and training for doctors and nurses. And this also impacts the social and economic factors related to health, uh, quality of housing, violence, poverty, and access to fresh food, uh, which is served a number of communities uh, worldwide. Um, and I think that work aligns with one of our core values at Peace Players, um, and it's called culture of collaboration, which just means that when faced with a conflict with another, um, I'm committed to finding solutions that meet the needs of both of us. You know, I won't uh, avoid the conflict. I won't give in, uh, nor will I try to win the conflict or compromise. But what I do, what I will do, is engage the person with respect uh, for that person's need and my own. And that's what you guys are doing. You're fulfilling needs of the community. And so this question is a bit unique in that uh, I like to know how uh, you along with the Roberts Woods Johnson Foundation are working to ensure that these inequitable issues are resolved. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's one thing to, to provide money and funding, but how, how are you making it so that there is no longer a need for a uh, Roberts Wood uh, Johnson Foundation and ensuring that these inequitable issues are eradicated from our society ultimately. Uh, and uh, one of our colleagues would call this in the business of putting yourself out of business. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's like the nonprofit stance. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I work to not have a job. Right, yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can share probably more on the sports awards. That I, obviously, the foundation is incredible, um, does a tremendous job around a lot of things. But I, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, it's, it's getting to that systems change. So it's, 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 and that's such a mindset for people of, you know, I'm doing this really good thing, but you're kind of doing it in like a corner. <laughs> so right, right, you right. need to like connect the, you know, the jobs, the housing, the safety, you know, how is this connected to these larger issues? Cause unless, unless you're connecting, like you're, it's great, but I mean, you're not really, like you say, you're not really going to get there. Like you're not, solving anything so right. um we've seen and that's that's what's been so amazing about our, our process is we see organizations that are doing that systems change and they're doing it through sport which is just incredible so we one just comes to mm -hmm. mind there's an organization in boston called inner city weightlifting and they take men who've been in the carceral system there um you don't really have a lot of opportunities when they come out um, and they train them to become trainers in a gym and they do a lot of other programming with them that I'm not going to get into but I mean it's an amazing program but they give them these opportunities but the they're, who they're training is generally like C-suite executives in Boston people who I think they always like to say, like people who literally would probably cross the street to not walk near these men um, previously. And now they're together training and they have this opportunity to really, you know, see each other very differently. 
yeah. um, yeah. which is cha it's changing a whole, I mean, it's changing a lot um, in society there. But, um, and that's just one example, but that's like how, that's the next step. It's not, oh, we're, we're doing this great program in a gym. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. no, you're like, there are layers there. Like, you know, you're, you're literally like disrupting like a system. Right. Um, right. And that, I mean, that's, that's just, that's how programming should be. You know, it needs to be thought of that way where um, it's, it's about the, the larger picture. It goes back to the mentorship element that you're talking about I think Alicia where we we, we were lucky enough to talk to um, Elena Beard um, in one of our previous episodes and one of her things is uh, she works for a foundation about transition uh, for play which is all about getting professional women's athletes or is that correct Jenny just yeah. women or all professional athletes just women no, well, professional women yep mm -hmm. um, just getting them more incorporated into uh, the corporate world sort of mm -hmm. and making that transition easier but that's sort of like you said sort of breaking the system the link of how things have commonly been right. going on uh yeah. for years um but i'm i'm just curious in your own like in your own mind sort of we've talked a lot about different types of uh challenges that you know the nonprofit world specific and specifically the sports philanthropy world faces and i'm curious if there's some that we just haven't addressed that you find to be some of the most challenging aspects of that world and i'm just curious if you have any other thoughts on that yeah gosh um there's a <laughs> lot of <laughs> no, there's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of we, challenges yeah yeah um, me and jenny know yeah yeah as you know um and i think it's different at each level so you know i i think there's assumptions made of um particularly I'll speak to philanthropy of, of someone who let's say works for a team, um, mm -hmm. but is on the charitable side of a team, there's generally an assumption that, oh, well, they don't need to raise money. They have the team, you right. know, they have right. resources. What is it like, I, I don't need to give, you know, what do they need this for? Um, and, and I, it, I, very short sight, you know, that, they do have, it's very separate a lot of times, you know, and then, um, so I just, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about, because people see the sport <laughs> um, and not necessarily that, no, it's actually just a nonprofit um, right. or an athlete foundation. You know, I ran an athlete foundation for two and a half years and you have to fight to fundraise. And it's, it's very hard because it, you get a lot of doors open to you, um, especially, you know, it was a high profile athlete. Um, and we, we got definitely had a lot of doors open to us, but at the end of the day, yeah, well, you know, he has, he has a lot of money. What do we need to give it? You know, it's, you hear the same thing and it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's a hard thing to overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I'm I'm very interested in in, in asking and and we'll, we're going to probably uh, wrap up soon, but uh, speak to the the nonprofits who are just getting started and they have no idea where to start, um, and, and they need funding and they they maybe they don't check all the boxes for some of these grants that are out there. Uh, what would your advice be for them just to have and keep that positive mindset while they're looking to fund their nonprofit? Yeah, um, I have a few thoughts, but okay. one. Um, which is, I'll get to the financial, but find peer support, like you're not alone because <laughs> literally everyone has that situation. So mm -hmm. make sure you have like a strong peer network and find that because they exist. Um, financially, I would say, you know, it's, it's always really good to start local. So if you're a local, you know, if you're, especially if you're a local nonprofit or something, um, and fam family foundations are amazing. So family foundations are just a great resource, especially because they're, they're always very local, focused yeah. very locally. Um, I, and just, yeah, I would say, I mean, start with that. And obviously build your board and have your board also help you. Yeah. <laughs> in that right. Right. That's their job. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And so um, 
and this is my last question for you. Speak to that younger you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who is just starting off in her career and she is trying to navigate what all this greatness is, right? You enjoy connecting and taking the research and the information and bringing people together and helping communities, um, but you don't know what the definition of that is and you stumble upon this sports philanthropy world um, and speak to the younger you. Um, and maybe I, I would even say narrow it down to five things to just really keep in your toolbox uh, mm -hmm. to ensure that you are really, and I hate to use the cliche word, impact, but impacting <clears throat> that sports philanthropy world in a dynamic way um, where you're really helping people. And like we said, maybe just helping that, those people that are right in front of you. What would that, those five, those five things be? I love that question. Wow. Oh, gosh. I... I'll, I'll just go, I, this is like how I interpret that and think of it. Um, okay. I have a lot of values that I stand by in this work and I think you have to, okay. um, especially in sports philanthropy. I think that's one of the other challenges to overcome is that there are a lot of people out there who claim they do sports philanthropy and they are not doing sports philanthropy. <laughs> they're not doing it for the right reasons. Right. Um, and I've seen a lot of those and right. have my own opinions on that. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel very strongly about my own values. Um, so I would say be genuine, be authentic. Don't lose sight of what you're about and not what other people want you to be about. Mm. Um, don't I'm not writing these down. I'm not writing these down. <laughs> yeah. Um, nope. Don't chase you know, the name or the brand or the big lights, that the little smaller things can be just as important and impactful Absolutely. as well. Right. Um, and then my biggest thing, which I sort of live by as well, which is that, you know, you're the only you you're ever going to be, or there will ever be, you're the only you that will ever be. So just stay true to that. Alicia, we like to do this thing on our show called the drop the mic moment. Mic moment. I know I'm like sure. writing these down. I'm so sorry. I got into it. Um, Ab uh, Emmett, you're right. Um, that is very amazing. And so for all our listeners out there, I'm going to really hone in on that one of those values, uh, which is you're the only you uh, that there will ever be. Um, hold those values that you care and you love um, close and dear to you. Don't chase names because they, there's no reward in the names, but do the work mm -hmm. that matters and commit yourself to the work and the people um, that need your service the most. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, thank you for the drop the mic moment. That was yeah. awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, seriously. That was amazing, Alicia. Really, yeah. really, really cool. And I, I'm going to be completely transparent before I got on this call. Well, before I did the research on you, sports philanthropy was just a word that I could barely spell. And <laughs> now I feel more yeah. confident. I know what sports philanthropy is, but less confident that I can still spell the word. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was, it, it's, it's always a pleasure and always really cool to talk to an expert in a field that you, I, well, I can only speak on my own behalf, Jenny, but just yeah. know really little about, but I'm very curious about. And you clearly show so much passion and authenticity and care and mm. commitment to something. Mm. And yeah. at Peace Players, th those are all words that we live by. And yeah. it's yeah. really, it's really inspirational to see you do the work that you're doing. Yeah. And I, I like this space because it was so like, this is more of one of our calmer shows. And I felt like, you know, at peace with the, the discussion that we're having and uh, without taking it away from you, I want to like put it back on you. Are, are there, is there a place or platforms where people can follow you and stay, stay along or come with you along the journey or even um, resources that you may have for our listeners or, or our viewers? Absolutely. I mean, there's a few. So we have the, the Sports Award website, which is on the rwjf.org website. There's our, all of our winners are there, all the information. There's great resources there. Just to even just look at model organizations, like who's doing what, who's doing it well. Um, the certificate program, which is also a sports and entertainment impact certificate. We also have 
other resources on there too. So even just a great, you know, well, who, who do I go to? Who's out there? You know, just scroll through the faculty and students and, you know, whether people are going to do the program or not, like, they're just good to know, like, who's really doing this stuff really well. Um, those are good lists to go through. And uh, my own website happens to be sportsphilanthropy.com. <laughs> so, awesome. Awesome. Um, so you can check that out too. And on LinkedIn, always happy to connect with people. Well, there you guys have it. Anything you need to get in contact with Alicia Greenberg. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia, for everything. Thank you. And thanks to Peace Players. I know they you've won the award. (laughs) I should have said that (laughs) early on, but (laughs) um, obviously one of the best out there. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, we appreciate you. The, the, this whole episode was just for that one compliment. Yeah, yes, that's you. it. Thank you. And now we can end the show. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening and joining us on this amazing journey. If you like what you heard, uh, we encourage you to like and subscribe. We've got so many more brilliant conversations and stories to share in the coming weeks. And please, like we always say, share with a friend. Emmett, Mm. I see your Mm. brilliant smile. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I, I I like to think now I'm an expert in sports philanthropy, but I can't (laughs) spell it still. P H I L. It's okay. And uh, no, we're not going to, we're not even going to try on the air. Um, Folks, you know what to do. If you want to learn more about Peace Players, you can visit us on our website and follow us on social media, mostly at Peace Players International. I'm talking Instagram. I'm talking Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Maybe even MySpace and Tumblr. Just kidding. (laughs) Nobody uses those sites anymore. Um, We have a few other plugs also. If you liked Alicia Greenberg's episode, you can check out her son, Jacob, who is 10, and I repeat, 10 years old Absolutely. on the JMB Sports Podcast. He's a 10-year-old with his own podcast. Yeah, what are you doing with your life? I don't know. <laughs> um, currently, Jenny, now that I know that information, right. you can check that podcast out. It's on all platforms. I'm going to go lay down and listen to a 10-year-old got, son tell me, lay down. but I don't know because I need to know. <laughs> right. right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, Emmett, are you, I was actually just, are you really